So they're sitting there having these interviews, and it becomes a controversy of the land. Congress takes it as a debate, and they're talking about it. And, uh, discussions about it are ruled out of some sections, some states. They say, we don't want to hear about it anymore. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Are you, which side are you on, the unrain or the it's going to rain? And then they form parties, then they've got this uh, uh, left party of the rainers, uh, no, the non-rainers, and the right party of the rainers. And then there's toward the middle, the not all the way left, uh, it might rain. And then a little bit toward the right, it probably will rain. And if you're right in the middle, it's like whatever. So it, I'm talking about if it was in our day, you know. And, and then time goes on, they're just out there, you know, just having a big old time partying, doing everything we've always done. Because even the ones on the far right don't really believe it. They just want to be with the crowd that's against that other crowd. But all of a sudden, they're just standing around talking about this stuff, and there's that, ding, what was that? Then they're just looking on the ground, and some dust just kind of like pops. What was that? Then they feel something. I'm going to tell you, if you ever get in a position wherever you are, where you feel that first drop of rain, I'm talking about the power of God in your life. You better start running to this ark of safety. Because the church, the thing that everybody's laughing at, the church, that's being ruled out of society, ruled out of school, ruled out of government, the church is the boat where the family of God is going to be saved from the floods that are going to destroy this earth. But it won't be with water. It'll be with fire. This is the fireproof vault for escape if you want to do what it takes in our day. When you talk about it, well, don't talk about it at school. <laughs> don't bring it up. Don't bring it up in a business place. Don't bring it up in politics. You know, what was a good thing, dividing church and state, in the beginning, it was for a good reason. It was mainly to keep the, the government from interfering with your right to worship. That was what the whole thing was about. We were provided as church people in America. No matter what you believe, no matter what persuasion you're of, the government has no right to give you any kind of rule you can worship from your heart in the way you please. But through a couple of hundred years, a man manipulating it, and it sounds like if you grew up in this uh, country of ours and you're less than, say, 30 years old, it seems like anybody that says praise the Lord in a public place is out of order. And those Christians need to be taken off somewhere and beat to death for the way they're acting out here because we got a we got separation of church and state. And you only need to do that at church if you're supposed to do it at all. But don't you do it out here in public. This is America! No, the truth of the matter is, if it's done according to the Constitution, according to what's right, according to what's being handed down to us that most of the young people don't know about, and it's being taken out of the future history books of the past so that they'll never know about it if it can be done. Uh, you know, how in the world do you change history anyway? But that's what they're trying to do down in Texas right now. Take, uh, you know, the things that have to do anything with, like, Patrick Henry or, or any freedom fighter or anybody that protected our rights to be American. They want to take that out of all the textbooks starting in Texas and going into every state for the next 10 years so that this new generation come on on will only know, you know, kind of what started now rather than what happened before. And whatever happens now based on this is how we'll write history. You can't change history. History is what it was. And you can cover it up, hide it, and say it didn't happen. It still happened. There are still soldiers in those graves that did shed their blood for the country, and they were doing it for a free America. But I'm not off on a political stump tonight trying to be your president. There's a statue of liberty, a liberty that's worth dying for, a liberty that was provided through death. There is a freedom that was fought for and delivered to us. Jesus did it on an old rugged cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So back to Peter and these people that went with him to speak to this household of Cornelius and Caesarea. You know what they said after Peter preached a while to these Gentiles? 
those men that went with him said, Hey, we know they received the Holy Ghost, for we heard them speak in tongues. We heard them speak with tongues. We. Now, what's the significance of that? These that went with Peter were in that place when the Holy Ghost was first poured out. And they had received the Holy Spirit of God because they had learned to recognize the voice of God speaking to their hearts and they had learned to speak to God and know that they were praying to the right God, the real God. And in that knowledge and that experience filled with the Holy Ghost, these Jews that came with Peter to the household of Cornelius said, we know they received the Holy Ghost like we did. Because we heard them speak in tongues. And we would know it if it wasn't of God. That was really what they were saying. Because we've got the real thing. This is not some charismatic movement. This is not some manufactured of the devil tongue speaking going on here. This is not some kind of ta 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 ti 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 speak like me thing. This is really coming from God. We're convinced this is of God. Hallelujah! And then Peter said, Well, can any of you forbid these folks to get baptized like we did in the name of Jesus? And when they left there, there was more than just Cornelius' household converted. But the Jews that came with Peter also were converted. Because God showed them, this is not for only you, but it's for all people. Just like Peter said on the day of Pentecost, it's for you, for your children, and to all. They were converted just like Cornelius' household was converted. Because what they saw was what they had experienced. And you see, this thing is in the world today. It's always been here. There's a, like I mentioned, there's the fake and there is the real. You can tell when somebody's faking it even if you have ever really been in love. And then somebody says to you, I love you. It doesn't have the right ring to it if it's not real. Even if it's somebody that Maybe as your wife or your husband, uh, or your girlfriend or boyfriend. God also recognizes it when it's not real as we speak to Him. We can use the same words that we use when it is real, talking to God. But words won't cut it unless there's the right spirit with the words. Amen. And God knows immediately if you're of the right spirit or not of the right spirit as I read the other night in the word of God it said there will be people there in the very end who will say Lord we prophesied in your name we cast out devils in your name we did everything we, we saw miracles we, we were in other words we were saying all the right words and doing all the right stuff but Jesus looked at them and said but I never knew you so it is possible to go to church and do all the right things it seems and still not be pleasing to God because God wants the spirit that you're following to be the real thing. And that can account for the fact that so many people who seemingly are saved and know the truth, who attend the same church, trying to build the same tower or the same uh, congregation, trying to build the same tower, or, I mean organization, trying to build the same tower, I mean fellowship circle, trying to, you know, what I'm saying is I'm saying on purpose, I'm not making mistakes. We get so caught up in our, you think like me, I think like you, let's work together syndrome that God sees what's going on. And certain people are working together for a common cause and they're all speaking the same language. Now, I'm not talking about English or Spanish. I'm talking about they're saying what they want others to believe and they're hearing them say what they say judging whether or not it's what they believe before they can fellowship them or call them brother or sister. So God sees that, and pretty soon, as time goes on, after a while, one of them says something that rocks the tower, rocks the boat. That then they have to get together and decide, oh, what are we going to do? I thought, thought he was one of us. I thought that one was, hmm. And what happens, God scatters people, 
no matter how good your organization is, there comes a time when it's time for God to step in and remind everybody that the kingdom of heaven does not depend on man's towers. 